We is live. We is live. We're, we are, and I mean that camera, we're live. Hello, good evening and welcome to what we thought was going to be a chat roll free VT talk. But at the very last minute, at the very last minute, the cavalry turned up and chat is now working. It is working, isn't it, Sav? It's working. It's limping, but it's working. It's there, is it? For now. Cool. For now. Coolio, coolio. As you can see tonight, it's a threesome. I'm having a threesome tonight with Lorian and with Sav. Lorian, who's in the big monitor tonight where Sav was last week. Hi, Lorian. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you very much. Oh, good. We've got audio ahead of video from Lorian. <laughs> the, internet, <laughs> the internet pixies are going to kill us something chronic tonight, but never mind. I'll this, shut stuff down. May, maybe, maybe what it is, is that uh, Prism has run out of menu, memory. Prism's definitely run out of memory. <laughs> Tell you what we'll do, we'll go into the titles, and when we come in tonight, there's, I've got a sheet of paper here with all kinds of things on, but we're going to be looking at some video. We're going to be looking at video of the jury committee today. You'll love that. Um, I've got a challenge that's been set to me, and I want to know how everybody's going to do. Um, and oh, there's all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff to talk about. And that will all be on the one and only programme that's called VT Talk. And we are back in the room on Wednesday, the 19th of June, a week after Black Wednesday, the week after the MHRA came out and unspread its form of gloom all over the UK and by inference into the EU as well. But today's been slightly different, hasn't it? It's been very different because jury met today and we managed actually to get some footage from that, although at first I have to say it could have been in Serbo-Croat for all, it might have been actually. Um, it took us until a wee while into the show to actually manage to get the English translation coming through. Uh, but we did, and we've got some footage from that, the important footage from that, which uh, which we'll show you. Um, but Lorian, what do you, what do you know about uh, what went on today? Out or not? Um, not so much at the minute. I'm looking forward to what you're going to play. I've got the gist of what's happened and that it's looking positive for what's going to be coming out potentially tomorrow that's all i can say until i hear some more stuff i can't say much more at the minute well indeed yes do, do you, i mean for, for everybody else's benefit i suppose we ought to really say that the jury as you know is the legal affairs committee um and they have an opinion on most things because obviously they've got to have a look at any legislation and find out whether it is in fact legal to implement because some things obviously aren't um but interestingly today didn't seem to go so much about the legal side of things. Now, I would I would imagine most people are aware of who Rebecca Taylor is. You, you certainly are, aren't you, Lorian? Oh yes, we, a newfound hero, I think, in Rebecca Taylor, definitely. Well, yes, I, I would I would think that's pretty much the case. Rebecca Taylor represents the kind of MEP that everybody should have, regardless of what her political persuasions might be, because right at well, look, the I'll, 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 I'll best thing I can do is let Rebecca tell you herself. Um, and it would be great if I can find it. This is from SWAF, and this is Rebecca Taylor. My name is Rebecca Taylor. I'm a Liberal Democrat member of the European Parliament uh, for Yorkshire and the Humber. And, and the Liberal Democrats believe that Britain has a future in the European Union. I first heard about electronic cigarettes and um, their users probably about three months ago, just after the tobacco directive, the draft proposal was published. I started to, to receive um, a number of emails from um, people. I wrote a blog um, sort of giving my opinion on how you know, electronic cigarettes should be regulated and I received something like 75 comments on there. There was a workshop on e-cigarettes in the Parliament this week. Um, thank you everybody for coming to this workshop. I want to say a couple of things about the workshop because I've seen some of the emails flying around and I've seen some of the um, things on the internet. This workshop was organised by, by myself and the committee because we wanted, we're discussing 
how to regulate e-cigarettes. The reason that some people were, have been talking about a ban on e-cigarettes is because the, the, the original proposal from the Commission, the, the European Civil Service, proposed that e-cigarettes should go through the medicines regulation if they contained higher than a certain level of nicotine and most e-cigarettes do contain higher than that level. So what people were saying was it's not actually a ban but it's a de facto ban. Rebecca Taylor. I'd also understood there was no evidence, I, I haven't seen any myself, of e-cigarettes being a gateway to tobacco. Given that they don't taste like tobacco, um, I, would, I would heavily question that. Um, at times, I was quite exasperated in the workshop because some of the speakers were making assumptions with, that have absolutely no evidence to back them up. In fact, evidence exists almost to, to disprove what they were saying. Apart from nicotine, both toxic and carcinogenic compon components have been found in e-cigarettes. You know, in Italy we have three cases of explosion of e-cigarette related to the manufacturing. And clearly, in Italy, they found ben benzene in, uh, in the uh, uh, vapor. Unlike patches, unlike sprays, unlike gums, these products are designed to look like cigarettes. We have things we know that we know, there are things that we know that we don't know, and there are clearly unknown knowns. There was a deadline for MEPs to make suggested changes, i.e. amendments to the tobacco directive on Wednesday this week. Um, and the rapporteur, Mrs McAvan, said that uh, over 1,200 um, had been submitted. I think that we are going to end up, I'm confident that we're going to end up with something that is appropriate and that isn't too heavy handed. I think in five years time we'll probably see more people using electronic cigarettes um, than we do now and possibly as a result hopefully less people smoking tobacco. Now, that was Rebecca Taylor um, shortly after May the 7th. I think it was probably May the 8th or May the 9th. And you might think, well, those are fine words coming from an MEP, but what if she doesn't follow through? Well, here's the thing. She has followed through. She's a member of the jury committee. And as you heard from her, from her, from her own mouth, she's sought opinion from people who use. So she went into the jury committee and... Um, well, I'll just play you in her bit on e-cigs and then we'll let it flow through and you'll hear some really rather pleasant stuff. In relation to Article 18 on nicotine containing products, um, I'm very happy that we've reached uh, what I think is a, a good agreement on this and I thank Mr Lena for his support of my amendments. We all recognise that e-cigarettes have a potential um, when it comes to reducing um, the, people who, the number of people who use tobacco. There is a need to tighten up on the regulation and to make sure that the consumer legislation that already exists is respected because it's enforced and respected, which is not always the case. Um, but I am of the view that medicines legislation is, is not the way to do it. Um, I think that's over-regulating, and I think if they go into the medicines legislation, they will never come out. Um, we, we need to, my bottom line on that is that we need to ensure that these products are, at the very least, as available as tobacco. If we make them less available than tobacco, I think we have failed. Well, this is uh, the customary quandary uh, for things that can be harmful to health. We talked about the traffic light labelling system for sugary and fatty foods and so on. I don't like governments intervening, meddling in this way in the tastes of, uh, of consumers. It's not about the size of the warning. People know that smoking is bad for you. There may be the odd person who doesn't know it, but basically smoking is bad for you. That's well known. Now, it may be that people don't necessarily do what they want with their own health. Well, remember that when you go to get health care treatment, you are ultimately uh, saddling others with the debt. So we need to find a balance. If you need radiotherapy, for example, for cancer, 
uh, and this is often uh, the approach. I mean, we can't just let people do whatever they want to, to do with their own health. No, not if someone else gets saddles with the, saddled with a bill. But at the same time, you can't say you, to people, you can't do what you want. Now, you, now, basically, if people choose to go around scantily clad when, when it's... Uh, when it's cold outside and they get a lung infection, well, ultimately we get saddled with a bill. Now, people could go up high in the mountains and not properly equipped, then ultimately fall, uh, break their leg, they get injured and they need help. Now, okay, there's individual behaviour where perhaps you have to intervene, but we don't necessarily do it. But I don't understand why tobacco is singled out here. Of course, alcoholic beverages as well, fizzy drinks too. Now, in, in some countries, uh, impose a tax on carbonated beverages, so it's cheaper to drink uh, still drinks, for example. But these may be individual decisions, but they have an impact on the family uh, and the broader community. So it's always about the balance. Then, on additives and flavourings. Honestly, I don't really understand why you can't have a, a menthol cigarette but you can have flavoured grappa. I mean, either a uh, product is what it is or, or, or it can be mixed. I mean, you, you, you can't have both things. I'm sure we're all aware of cocktails. Basically, uh, cocktails is all about adding flavourings to a basic underlying product. Take uh, Kira. It's uh, creme de cassis with, with wine or, or champagne. Well... Let's ban it, shall we? Because there's a fl flavouring added that's not there at the beginning. No, it's not. Be menthol is more harmful than anything else uh, compared to, say, lemon, for example, in a grappa. Thank you, colleague. Mr. Hospital. The only people who seem to be in favour of this are um, medical associations. Uh, if I look back to last week. Um, if you if you if you go uh, to a, a shop where you buy a lottery ticket well uh, the gentleman uh, who runs the shop is an italian and he doesn't make his money selling lottery tickets but rather uh, s selling cigarettes and there are all sorts of letters from people saying if uh, the directive is adopted uh, this will have a huge impact uh, on the distribution of tobacco the way that uh, the products appear, the way they're to be sold, all of this. And it will really have a multiplier effect. They Every day, hundreds of people uh, come to them and say uh, how silly this is, how ridiculous this is. And then uh, I could go and buy rolls from uh, a, a, a Turkish uh, shop owner, probably with a German passport. And then he asks me, well, what's happening with the tobacco uh, directive? Because every day, hundreds of people go in there to buy their rolls and uh, talk about it. And so this is a multiplier. So these people uh, uh, hear people's political views and they're coming along and saying this is over-regulation. And you just have to ask at home. Uh, my mother uh, started smoking uh, and at an earlier age, and uh, uh, she's now 82. And I say that that her um, her, her lungs are uh, well protected by tar, and uh, she but she smokes slim cigarettes because she doesn't understand why she can't smoke slim cigarettes anymore. So these are people, or ordinary people, who, who make decisions, and but they really don't understand what we're doing. Uh, more practical experience. On Saturday morning, I was at an event in uh, Dusseldorf. Uh, oh, I had a, a private event in the afternoon, and I tried to get out. And the reason that the whole town was blocked, because uh, there was... Uh, a demonstration not against this directive but against uh, uh, a ban on smoking in pubs but they're starting to get organized they're get mobilizing 
because they're getting uh, the impression that they're being told what to do, that there's a totalitarian approach. But I think we need to be reasonable and take reasonable decisions. And I think that if we exaggerate things that create the impression that we're over regulating and uh, telling people what to do, that's going to have a very negative effect and will have an impact on everything that we do. And so I think that's why we need to find the right balance of interests and come up with good compromises. But I do think that we're on the right way. And I think that that's perhaps something that we can do better here in the Legal Affairs Committee than in some of the other committees where they're looking at things only from a, a health point of view. And so for that reason, I'm uh, very grateful to the colleagues for all of the comments that they've made. Uh, that we'll have the uh, vote tomorrow. We're not the, um, the lead committee. We will we'll be giving uh, our opinion. It'll go to Envy, and then it will go to plenary, and we'll see what happens. Mr. Mr. Uh, Stoyanov, as a rapporteur, you have the floor. Uh, a colleague uh, said something I wish to compliment. I uh, would uh, rather suggest uh, to back up uh, the opinion not of the legal service, but uh, the opinion which we've uh, drawn up together with the secretariat of the committee. This has been submitted too. It contains uh, very detailed tables and very detailed arguments as to uh, why we should or should not uh, back up uh, delegated or implemented n implementing acts. So um, I would like to uh, tell you, uh, Chairman, uh, that not only my mother but also my wife uh, is a smoker, so I don't know if I will live uh, long enough in order to be disinherited. We all have to live with our fates. So can we move on now from those two? And that, you, you see, I'm sat back and relaxed. This is, it was such a pleasant meeting to watch. It was just so delightful. Now, Laurie, and I know you didn't manage to hear the live, but from what you've heard, what do you make of that? I'm quite surprised, actually. That's an, um, they, they went with an angle that I wasn't expecting, and they were looking at the angle of actually how does this affect people and society at large, and what are we telling people by kind of demonising electronic cigarettes. I, I wasn't expecting that angle at all, and that's really interesting and refreshing, so refreshing to hear. Isn't it just? I'm, I've, got to, yeah. I've got to go to South because I'm sure that chat and Twitter will have had something to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> right, I'll see if I can make any sense of this. Um, chat and Twitter give a big thumbs up to Rebecca Taylor. Good, good. A big thumbs down to Linda McAvan. <laughs> There's a shock. <laughs> um, Scree has said, I can't say that hearing this is restoring my faith in the Euro Parliament because I've never had any faith to start with. Mm -hmm. Um... Mitch Dog also said, good on Rebecca Taylor. Matt CLK has said, this must be the sensible minister's meeting week. <laughs> and Vapor Man says, I'm guessing listening to this, they're going to ban flavoured water as well. Well, you never know your look. You never actually know your look. Um, I think if the jury committee, or if all the members of the jury committee had been on the Envy Committee, and all the members of the Envy Committee hadn't been, if you see what I'm saying, things might have been very different from the way they are now. We're going to go into this uh, much, much further uh, after the break, um, just really to give Laurie and time to get our thoughts together because she was busily scribbling notes as we went through that little lot. So we'll take a break and when we get back, we're going to talk about it a little bit further because although this is all very good, it's unfortunately not the end of the story. We'll be back in a couple of minutes.
Weber and I Weber Election. Best in Yorkshire for your AC games. That's iWeber.co.uk and iWeber-Alexa.co.uk. I Weber and I Weber-Alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of WeberTrails.tv. And we're back in the room, back in the room. So, Lorian, straight away, while, you, while your memory's fresh, go on, have you see What I found interesting, we were trying to, just then trying to work out who was talking, because obviously I couldn't see um, the screen to know who was talking. Um, but there seems to have been a real acknowledgement of the fact that there is a difference between the, the smokers that can give up and, and all that kind of thing, and the smokers that can't, get us lots, who have tried everything and we are the heavy hardened smokers and that we need to be considered and a lot of what was being talked about there was actually thinking about that and also the absurdity of the whole thing of how far do you stretch the idea of flavorings and how how much they impact people the place i work at we've we've got a vodka that's just come in a smirnoff vodka so it's full strength vodka and when you take the lid off um, it smells like apple sours. I don't know if any of you probably will recognise what apple sours are. Yeah. Um, and it struck me that if you was in a nightclub and you were young, somebody could pass you a shot of this stuff and you think it's apple sours at 12% and it's not. It's full-on vodka at 40%, yeah. which smells exactly the same without you knowing what you're being given. All that stuff is socially acceptable to have all these really sweetie flavoured stuff, which makes all of this a nonsense. And I think people are picking... They are starting to recognise that it is a hypocrisy and a nonsense. But I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, it, it, the, the whole thing drives me up the wall. And, and I've seen so many people on Twitter saying, you know, do your taste buds get switched off when you're 18? Well, as soon as the minute you're old enough to buy cigarettes legally, does that mean you no longer have any taste buds? Um, and it, it, it's it's such an issue. Um, to some degree, I can, I can almost understand where they're coming from almost understand where they're coming from but if you've been on clivebates.com you'll see why this whole recruiting people thing is a load of nonsense and we'll have a little bit of that later on but first let's throw it back to Sav because I'm seeing the eyeballs there's definitely one eye on the pot the other up the chimney there's messages coming in all over the place how's it going there Sav? I'm getting there I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> now, first of all, I need to apologise to Scree in chat because I missed off half his comment and it made him sound really negative. The end bit of his comment about losing faith was Rebecca Taylor is given faith back in the European Parliament. Oh, I would certainly agree with yes. that. I've got to say that, um, and I, I'll, I'll go back to the joint screen. I'm sorry to interrupt you there. Right. I, I have to say, as I said before, if every MEP... In, not just in the UK, but in Europe, if every MEP took the diligence that Rebecca Taylor has shown in doing what she's done during the course of all of these shenanigans and actually done the research, talked to the people, if every MEP did that, I don't think anybody would have any trouble with being in the EU. I think we'd all be happy as Larry to be in the EU if all the MP MEPs were like Rebecca Taylor and Chris Davis and Fiona Hall as well. I mean, that's, that's three I know of. Um, almost on a personal basis they take a proper interest in what what not just their constituents but the whole of the country is talking about i think it's fabulous sorry Sav, back to you right Kronos has said what i took from that was they now realize that this holier than thou attitude is damaging the eu's credibility mm -hmm. liana lawless has said jury makes sense all of that does compared to the rest mm -hmm. Liam D. Vapor has asked, how much power does jury have? Can't Envy kind of ignore them and let it go to court? Um, I would probably better cover that one, really. Yeah, effectively, Envy can go, well, we don't like what jury said. My suspicion is that they'll see some sense in it. I would hope they would see some sense in it. Um, I would hope they'd see an awful lot of sense in it, to be, to be absolutely honest. But, he's right. Um, it's an opinion and like anybody's opinion you can ignore what it is it will be discussed and it will be discussed at some length but as I recall the last time we uh, eavesdropped on the Envy committee um, Ms McCavan did say 
that there was one committee which was being troublesome and I suspect that that's the jury committee. Um, if, they, if they think the jury committee is troublesome, I think they're going to find the courts even more troublesome. But the thing about it is it just it shouldn't get there. We don't want it to get there. And for all sorts of reasons, which I'll cover, not now, because now's not the time. It's too, too good a day for, for, for covering all that. But we really don't want to get there. More from you, Sav? Yeah, um, Sue Biscuit has said, they need to remember that there are people out there that have never wanted to quit or give up mm -hmm. and the last comment was exactly what you've just said and it came from mark shaw and he said wasn't it jury the jury committee that linda mccavin said she was being that they were being awkward about or words to that effect when she was in the workshop yeah that's that's exactly them sorry had you got more there no, that's it. Apart from, um, there's a couple of people asked, will we be covering the Envy thing that's on tomorrow? Or the jury thing, the vote, whatever vote it is that's on tomorrow. There's apparently a vote on tomorrow. There is, there is a vote on tomorrow, yes. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, I think it's on at two o'clock. The problem with covering that, uh, it'll be very much like the, the, the last time that we did uh, eavesdrop on a vote. And it literally, it's it's... Number 52, all in favour, all against. Abstentions, rejected. Number 53, all in favour, all against. And, and to, in truth, in absolute truth, you don't know what the, the final report is going to look like until they've gone through, ticked all the boxes, done the in favours, against, abstention, whatever, all of that kind of stuff. Then they have to pull it all together because some amendments rely on other amendments. Then you've got, um, not composite, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's gone but anyway th th they've got all these different kinds of things that they go through and in some cases you can pass amendment 5 shall we say and then when you get to amendment 92 because amendment 92 fails so does amendment number 5 so it'd be no good sitting going yes because you've got to know exactly where it's at so although we could cover it it'll actually be boring it, it, it literally will be 53 all in favour against abstentions rejected that's not what i was expecting so we'll have an electronic vote that's the way these things tend to work and it, and, and, it, and it, you can't make head and a tail of it but as soon as we've got the um the substantive opinion as soon as that document is ready trust me on this one we will bring it to you we'll be tweeting it we'll be sh talking about it on the program and so on and so forth <laughs> same applies to imco same applies to agri inter and who the hell else is doing it? Um, yeah, all of those. So as soon, as soon as we know what the opinions are, we'll, without a doubt, certainly tell you. Um, and I'm going to throw it across to Lorian now to find out what her take is on what's just gone on. Uh, on what's just gone on? Um, yeah, all, all of, the, all know, of this. Think all of this i think we can take a lot of heart from actually what's come out of jury today by the sounds of it certainly um but we have got to remember that there isn't the end of the story and it just it's it's so far from the end of the story and there's still a lot of work to be done and, and we've kind of we've still got a lot of work to do ourselves as well it's not over it's good news it's really good news um but there's still stuff to be done indeed it's it's it, it's encouraging isn't it it's encouraging yeah. it gives you the it heart is. It gives you that, that little bit of um, steel in the backbone where it might have been going a little bit to jelly to actually, you know, go further, fight on, get, get a bit more uh, about it all. Which is where Jerry Stimson comes in. I told you I'd get there soon enough. This is where Jerry Stimson comes in. Now, he phoned me up earlier on today and he, he's had an idea. And I've got a, an awful lot of time for Jerry, as much time as I've got for Clive. Um, and Jerry has suggested, he said, what do you think? Would it be a good idea if we marched on Brussels or congregated in Brussels outside the Parliament on the day before or on the day, either one, of the vote in July? So that's July the 10th or 11th, I think it is, isn't it? Um, and he said, can you find out? Would people be willing to go? And there may be some way that Jerry's organisation can assist with travelling expenses. We don't know what that is, but this is just purely and simply the idea. What do you think? If we, we, we I don't know, if we can get 40 or 50 from the UK, we can probably get 
more than that from Germany, definitely a lot from Belgium and Holland and, and France, the places that are very, very close to Brussels. Um, we should probably be able to get three, four, five hundred people. It would be nice if it was three, four, five thousand. But there you go. What do you think? That's what Jerry wants to know. Is it worth organising? If it's worth organising, how many people can we get? Now, the uh, Envy Committee meets on a Wednesday and Thursday. And if this all comes off, I'm going. That might mean there's no VT talk on the Wednesday night or alternatively, there's no here's hour on the Thursday night because whichever day it's happening, I for one am definitely going to be there. I've made my mind up, I'm going. I'll go and hang my backside out on the town hall steps to get the money together to do it. I will swing my handbag, do that kind of thing. It works, doesn't it, Lorian? The handbag swinging, it has an effect. Yeah, we'll get you some pigeons as well if you like. All right, fair enough. Um, so I'm, I'm throwing that to chat and, and while, while chat's thinking about it and clattering their, uh, their responses in, I think we'll have a few words from Clive Bates. This is Clive, again, all part of Swath. This is where the money's gone. Watch this, it's tremendous. I think the e-cigarette market is unstoppable when it comes to demand from users, from smokers. Um, you know, I think it's one of those things like once you've seen it, you just, once you've used it and found it satisfactory, you're just never gonna go back. You know, in the same way that people don't go from colour telly to black and white. People will go into uh, people will go into e-cigarettes and that will be it. I'm Clive Bates. Uh, I first got interested in this issue when I worked for ASH, that's Action on Smoking and Health, between 97 and 2003. I then went on to be uh, a civil servant working for the government, the UN, uh, the Environment Agency. And then most recently, I've set up my own little consultancy and advocacy organisation and I run the Counterfactual blog. I'm not a user of any nicotine products at all, actually, uh, but I care a lot about public health and I care more generally about public policy and doing the right thing. And this is a classic case study in doing the right thing by doing less as a government. No public health experts have approved them, no government money has been spent, no NHS resources have been consumed, no taxpayers have been harmed. It's, it's quite an extraordinary good thing about free markets allowing people to find their own way out of the uh, risks of smoking. The only cloud on the horizon is if this will all be throttled and smothered with red tape by excessive regulation. I think the instinct to regulate comes from you know, being very risk averse and wanting to avoid things going wrong. But the danger is different things go wrong. You, you have unintended consequences. And the unintended consequence in this case would be that you make the products less attractive, you reduce innovation, you decrease the diversity of what's on the market, um, you change the marketing and packaging and general pro marketing proposition to make it more boring. The consequence is that you have a negative effect because fewer people switch and therefore more people continue to smoke. And that's the health impact, the negative health impact of excessive caution. A safe product, perfectly safe product that no one wants to use is no use to anybody. The basis of the statement from the MHRA really had um, two, there's two significant things in it. The, the first is an acknowledgement that this is all now being handled at EU level. So the unilateral effort that they were trying to make in 2010 is now out of time, really. They need to go with the European programme. And we remember when we talk about the MHRA and what experts they are, they wanted to ban these products within 21 days back in 2010. Um, thankfully, the vaping community um, overturned that and we've got something a bit more sensible now. And the second thing that came out uh, in the announcement is the fact that the UK government will support the Commission's proposal when it's debated in the Council of Ministers. And um, really not much else, to be honest. We, we got a lot more detail. A lot of it, I have to say, completely unsatisfactory from an analytical point of view. But nevertheless, they have now exposed their thinking, which is helpful. Over the next three years, I, I think we'll see incredibly rapid growth. 
Uh, we don't yet know um, whether the 2016 date is real. The uh, fine print in the MHRA's announcement says that's the date the European Commission expects the EU directive will come into force. But it may, it may not come into force by then, it may be a year later, it may not come into force at all. And if it does come into force, it may be something different than medicines regulation. So all that is doing is rehearsing what the Commission would like to happen, the European Commission would like to happen. It isn't necessarily exactly what will happen, and what will happen will be determined by the politics of the European Council and the European Parliament, and that's where vapors and e-cigarette users have made great progress so far and can make even more progress in the run-up to the final decisions which will be taken around the end of this year. So those that think it's all hopeless and a waste of time, it's just so totally wrong. It is actually working and now is the time to really put the pressure on. So there you go, that's Clive Bates saying that the time to act is now. We've got to keep the pressure on. Now's the time to get out there and do it, which kind of falls in basically with what Jerry's been saying. Sav, what, what have chat and Twitter and Facebook and everywhere else had to say? <laughs> There's been an awful lot of people saying they'd love to get involved in the Brussels um, thing. We've had a lot of comments. Jeff Bennion said, yeah, a road trip. Mark Shaw said, cheap way to get there would be to drive in car share. Swifty McTavish says, make sure Swaff's there, DD. Very Boring says, get any vapors from anywhere in the EU to come along so it's a proper multinational. Mm -hmm. I got a, a plus one Brussels from Gordon Beard on Twitter. And Marco, our very own Marco, came up with a, a suggestion. He says, take one balloon for every smoking related death that would be saved in one day and let them go in front of the building in Brussels. Oh, oh my god, that's brilliant! <laughs> that's brilliant! How many would that be? 700,000 balloons being released, each one a death due to smoking. And wow. then, then we could release how many balloons? Uh, why is my head. I'm sorry, I'm gobsmacked by that. <laughs> Mark, oh, that's brilliant. That yeah. is. Brilliant, Lorian. Oh, uh, that's that's. Do you know what? That's actually made, made made the hair stand up on my arms. That's had quite an emotional impact. That has. That is a genius suggestion. Awesome suggestion. It it's shut me up. So it must be yeah. pretty good, dearie me. That's that's fabulous. Brilliant suggestion. Yes, absolutely. Too right. Um, I've gone all of a fur. <laughs> I've I've gone all clear and horrid. I tell you what. We'll take an, a, a set of adverts, and when we get back, we'll kind of take this this first Twitter and... What are you laughing at, Sam? <laughs> I'm sorry, Screech just put a comment in chat saying, and of course, because we all vape, we'll have the lung power to blow up the balloons. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yes. And, and the lung power to suck all the helium out of them as well. Yes. <clears throat> Serious. <coughs> Serious. <laughs> Let it take some adverts and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere.
And we are back in the room here on VT Talk on Wednesday, the 19th of June, week after Black Wednesday. And I'm sat here in the studio um, in, the, in the, the wonderful environment, it has to be said. I'm definitely the thorn between the two roses tonight because in the big monitor, we have Lorian C, um, Eka, and just gorgeousness, and the bubblicious babe, the, the effervescent loveliness that is my partner in crime, Sav. And we've, we've, we've been talking about MHRA a little bit. Don't want to talk about them too much. Don't want to give them the publicity. We've been talking about the jury committee a lot. Want to give them lots and lots of publicity. Been talking about Rebecca Taylor and big thumbs up for Rebecca Taylor. And then the three of us, more or less, got silenced by Mark o. Van Basten's suggestion that when, because I think it is a when, isn't it? When we get everybody together in Brussels, because it definitely looks like it's a goer, that we release 700,000 balloons to show how many people, how many lives would not be shortened if they leave e cigs alone and make sure that they can never ever be medicines. That's amazing. But Sav, I know you've got barrel loads of stuff coming through from chat and a couple of questions we probably need to handle. Yeah, we're getting a lot of plus ones for Marco's balloons in Twitter and a question Could that... Could you rephrase that? <laughs> That's what it says, plus one for Marco's balloons. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and Disco Des says, I really shouldn't read this now, but I will. Disco Des says, we can call it the Brussels blowjob. Oh, Des, Des, Des. But speaking that was of Des. my line. You can't do things like that. I'm supposed to bring the conversation down to the gutter, not the audience. Sorry, sir. Speaking of Des, he's also asked, he says, can someone please explain how the SWAF videos are getting out of the people in Brussels and the MEPs and such? Well, no, this is quite interesting because we know for a certain fact that certain MEPs are emailing the, uh, the videos to other MEPs. Um, and I'm not going to name any names because I've mentioned that too many times already. But I know for an absolute certain fact that they're being emailed the whole way around the European Parliament, which is possibly why we're having the effect that we are. That and the fact that everybody keeps on contacting MEPs and MPs and so on and so forth. And, and that's something we've got to keep on doing. We've now really, really, really got to put the pressure on because we've only got, what is it, four weeks? Three to four weeks before the Envy Committee takes its vote. So it's not very long away. And we've got to make our voices heard. So it's a great idea if you are emailing somebody to put the links into the SWAF videos, put the links into Clive Bates's blog. Always a good idea because his last one is amazing. I'm not going to spoil it for you by showing it. I want you to go and have a look. Clivebates.com. Go and have a look. Read, inwardly digest and send a link to every MP and MEP that you know with a little covering letter saying this is how gateways actually work. Gateways and pathways. And it is such a beautiful piece of prose. It is so logically put together and it is so obviously true. You've just got to get it there. So yeah, to answer, to, to answer Des, it's down to footwork, our footwork, not me, everybody. <coughs> it's our footwork that's doing it. Lauren, you got a comment on that? I do have a comment on that and I think, as you just said, this is, we're kind of at a peak now where we need to be doing stuff and I I, I'm saddened to say it, but I think a lot of people still don't quite realise the the impact that this could possibly have. And not just us who buy all our kit online and use all our fangle dangle equipment, but the, the majority of those 1.3 million users that Ashley's throwing out there, most of them are going to be Sigalite users. And whatever we think of them, and whether they work or they don't, there's going to be a point where those, those people go to the shop to pick them up and they're not there anymore they don't even know it's happening um and the kind of the weight does sit on our shoulders a little bit to actually do stuff because this is happening and as positive as the jury stuff was today we have got stuff to do it, it doesn't end here and we've got to pick up on it and do stuff now well there's, there's actually something that the jury committee has picked up which i'm going to put on screen now and i've highlighted the bit that's important but let me read it out um where are we at? It's not the only measure proposed that would make it more difficult to access reduced risk products. 
Article 18 of the proposal prohibits nicotine-containing products such as e-cigarettes containing a certain nicotine level if they are not authorised pursuant to Directive 2001-83 EC, the Medicinal Products Directive. It is, however, quite unclear if these products, which are much less harmful than tobacco products, even fall under the scope of the Medicinal Products Directive. Thank you, Rebecca Taylor. For products which do not fall under the directive, this would effectively constitute a ban. Banning products which are less harmful than tobacco products and which can be a means of smoking cessation is certainly not in line with the public health aims of the proposal. Now, everybody that uses an e-cig needs to be aware of that. We've said it before. I mean, my hope and prayer and intention is that what the MHRA said last week never ever comes to fruition and you've heard what Clive Bates has had to say about it. It might not, it might, it might not, it might happen in a year, it might be two years, it might be three years, it could be any length of time. But it, we've, got to, we've got to work hard to make sure that it doesn't. But if it does happen, if it does come to fruition, everything you know now, whether it's a Jenny, whether it's a Prevary, whether it's a GG, whether it's a Lucky Lakey, whether it's a 901, whether it's a 510, whether it's a box mod, doesn't matter what it is, they'll not be there. They'll not be on the market. They'll be closed down. There'll be businesses all over the country going out of business. And the MHRA appears not to understand that that's the case. And we need to make them know. We need to be contacting MPs, MEPs. We need to be contacting the MHRA. We need to be getting onto the press. And I've been getting onto the press because there's an event coming up at the end of June and hopefully, touch wood, touch wood, and that's the only place I, never mind, um, touch wood, the press will be along there. Swaff will definitely be there. I can say that for a certain fact. And I'd love to see as many people there as possible because if we can get enough folks and the TV cameras pick it up right, it's going to make a hell of a statement. Have a look. I clicked it. Play. Now I'll play. We're back, we're back. The knees meet, 29th of June, South Shields. You were asking about that, weren't you? I was, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know if many people know where I, where I am. I'm right down in North Cornwall, kind of <laughs> miles away from anywhere. But to be honest, I kind of see the value in making the journey up. And I've got my big yellow van and I think we're going to drive up um, and sleep in the van somewhere and do it. I don't see why not. Why not? That would be... That would be tremendous to actually see you in the flesh. I've got to be careful. Stop it, David. Stop it. You're an old man. Do you know, Keith accused me today. He said, it, it, things do slow down when you get near 60. I said, I'm not 58 yet, you cheeky monkey. He's a funny <laughs> lad, he's Keith. Wait till I see him tomorrow. I'll sort him out. Yeah, the more the merrier. There are places to stay. There are places to park. And outside the, uh, the hotel where it's all happening, the pub, the venue where it's all happening, there's enough grass to get half a million people on and probably not leave a footprint. It's an amazing place. You've got to be there. Like I say, I'm doing me, me level best to get cameras down there. In fact, when I contacted Sky News and said, uh, 
hey, is this? They said, why don't you put it on our What's Coming Up? And they're playing the video on it as well. It's been tweeted. Get out there. Because we've got Twitter tonight, haven't we, Sav? We have. We've got Twitter tonight. What are they saying? Um, we've had a tweet that's come through from CJW. And they say, regarding contacting MPs, MEPs, I still think that it's not just vapors who need to write, but their friends and their families too. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I could not agree more. Yeah. Everybody you know that is happy that you use e-cigs rather than smoke tabs, as does we say, ask me like tabs, that's how they say it up here. Everybody that's happy that you use an e-cig rather than smoking tabs, get them to write as well. The more people that make their voices heard or their typing read or however it is you want to put it, the more the merrier, the more pressure we put on both our government and the European government, the more pressure we put on, the better result we're going to have. Would you echo that, Lorian? Oh, God, I would. And in fact, I've, I, for the last couple of months, I've been looking at it from the opposite angle, as in if the, everybody that you know potentially will be attending your funeral when tobacco kills you, those are the people who are affected by this. It isn't just us. It's not just the smoker. The kind of radial damage is huge from a tobacco-related death, and every single person that affects essentially supports you and your e-cig, and their voices need to be heard. My kids, my eldest son has written a letter himself because he understands what this means, and we're not using your kids, but at the end of the day, they stand to lose the most, more than I will, because once I'm dead, I'm dead if I go back to tobacco. The pain is left for years and years with everybody else. I can, I can attest to that. And I mean, I've, I've actually watched last week's show back and I, I think I probably owe the world an apology for breaking down, but it just, the meaning of the whole thing and the impact of the whole thing just hit me right in the middle of the show. And it, it actually hurts. It, it hurts so badly and yet it's avoidable. And we can help other people we can help other folks that want to switch because honestly seriously if the Glenis Wilmots of this world get their own way I'm going to go closely up on this if the Glenis Wilmots of this world get their own way there's going to be absolutely no way anybody can switch from smoking to e-cigs because at the moment the only dog in the race is owned by BAT and that's this what is effectively a converted asthma inhaler, um, whether it's the Vipe, in which case it's a 401, in which case it's really not very good, um, or whether it's this one that's being made by Best Pack. Look it up. You'll see as much information as you can find. If you, if you Google Best Pack, B-E-S-P-A-K, and look what they're doing with, uh, with British American Tobacco, they're actually building it for them. And if you look at whatever else they build, you can see what it's going to be. It's not an e -cig. and I think, if, if I'll say this, and I'll see if I get any plus ones from Lorian and uh, from Sav. The fact of the matter is, I have also tried the plastic tampon, and it's just not even worth trying. Mm -hmm. My mum tried the patches, and she'd had the patch on for two hours and then lit a fag, because it did nothing for her other than make her arm go all mouldy and nasty and horrible and rotten. And we tried lozenges, we tried hypnotherapy, we tried all kinds of things between us at various different points in time over the years and nothing but nothing will work when you are how can i put it a hardened smoker i'm not going to say addicted i'm going to say dependent because I'm, I'm dependent on my nicotine always have been always will be there's nothing works quite as well as an electronic cigarette from stopping you from smoking the real things i'm going to come to you Lorian. would you agree uh without a question of a doubt Without a question of a doubt, I'm the person who couldn't even stop smoking through two of her pregnancies. Nothing has worked for me. Nothing the doctor's given me, nothing I've tried, nothing I've read. Nothing. I, I, I was a, cl cl a closed door. And how long is it since you had your last tab? 20th of November last year. That's not bad going. Sav? I've I tried the patches. Well, I say I tried them. I got them. I never actually stuck them on my body. I thought... Yeah, they'll not work. And went and bought some tabs. And I never tried the inhalator because I spent a good six months watching my mum walking around everywhere with this thing hanging out of her mouth. Yes. And it was like, and she'd come home and she'd put it down and she'd have a tab and then she'd pick it back up and it would be hanging out of her mouth again. <laughs> and I was like, 
No, that really doesn't work, does it? I saw, I saw one bloke in Lanzarote, and this is this is this is no shred of a lie. One bloke in Lanzarote that stuck his fag in the end of the inhalator and <laughs> used it as a cigarette holder. And yeah. He says it's working now. He says was it not before? He says no. You're just missing the piece of string, and I could give it to our last. He was a Jody. I'm saying no more than that. Back to you, Sav. What's what's happening with chat? Right, chat, we've had um, Gordon Beard has been plus one in balloons and plus one in camper vans on Twitter. We've had Very Boring saying, I love how the latest Clive Bates blog is written to answer the naysayers' arguments before they make them. Yes. Um, Marcos uh, added some more thoughts about the balloons. He says, if we say that 700,000 people would die every year, that would equate to approximately 1,918 a day. So 2,000 black balloons would seem apt to be released. To which Jeff yeah. Bennion followed with, followed by a single balloon signifying how many are saved by NRT. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> I love Jeff Ben, you know, I do. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people asking um, about po putting warnings in shops and things like that about everything that's going on at the minute. And um, with Sander, I think it is, who said, do you think vendors who would who just sell cigarettes would put warnings in their shops or, or do you think they wouldn't want to do that? Um, I think actually if we get on to the, uh, and I probably need to talk to Matt Gluggles about this because Matt knows a, a lot more about this than I do, but the convenience store operators, I mean the, the guy up the top of our street for instance, um, Jai's, they sell e-lights and I was talking to them and they, they, they had no clue this was all going on, not a clue, go on then Lorian. No, no, quite the opposite. There was a moth about to fly in the window and I frightened of moths. And I was just asking that someone shut the window. It was nothing. Oh. <laughs> you big girl. You big girl. What Sorry. are you like? Yeah. I was having a panic. I think, I think it's a great idea if we can get into the, uh, the convenience store people and the magazines and kind of get something in there, something we need to look at. Um, yeah, that was also something brought up by Lord Barbie, who said, I think this should be mentioned to the Federation of Small Businesses who lobby government. I am aware of at least one ASIC vendor who is a member, so maybe others should join. Yes. And Mark Shaw, no, sorry, it wasn't Mark Shaw, it was, um, it was Lord Barbie again, who said, regarding the media coverage, says, even my sister was aware of the media coverage regarding... A6 with the public awareness so high surely this is the time to pass on videos and get everything out there get the news agencies interested in our side absolutely right absolutely right Abs i mean now is the time that the iron's hot let's strike let's do whatever we can talk to your local papers um get hold of the report now I've, i'm in contact well, i'm not going to name any names at this point i'm in contact with a a, a vapor who, who also has a store who is he's doing his level best to get coverage and what he's doing is damn good stuff i'm, I'm not going to give too much away at this point in time because i don't want to jinx it but there's some great stuff going on everybody needs to be doing it we've all got local papers we've all got local rags we've got local radio all of that kind of stuff J just let's let's go for it let's get together keep in touch on twitter keep in touch in twat twat <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh no i got so far and i mentioned gary dibley <laughs> oh, no. It was all going. It was all going so well. You know what I'm going to do now, don't you, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of a better point than say good night. I think we better say good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>